Thanks for everybody coming out in bad weather. We had maybe 600 RSVPs, and you were the hardy ones that actually showed up. So that's great. Um, I want to thank Matt and Alex Ago and the Cinema School for give, allowing us to, to use this venue. Um, East Asian Study Center, Grace Rue, um, and uh, Taiwan Academy. We, we have uh, Emmy Young and, and Ivy Tung. Uh, uh, Chung Chung Films, the distribution company. Uh, yeah, there's Chu Raolin in the back, and the head of propaganda over there, publicity. <laughs> um, Taiwan Student Association was very helpful in spreading the word. We uh, ended up with a message on their Facebook page in Chinese, which certainly helps uh, for the turnout. And um, I'm sure I'm forgetting other people. But uh, this film is actually... Um, I'm going to introduce the director and the translator in a minute, so I haven't quite forgotten them. But um, this film is opening for one week run tomorrow on Sunset Boulevard at the Arena Cine Lounge. I believe that's right. And the director, Huang Xinyao, will be there for the first night. So um, tell your friends who are afraid of the rain that they can go and see it at that point at, in, on Sunset Boulevard. And really, I'm certainly honored personally because I've seen a number of his documentaries um, to actually finally meet Huang Xinyao and uh, like to introduce him to say a few words. And the translator is, uh, is uh, Chen Yiping, a PhD candidate in comparative literature. So, please. And there will be a Q&A after this. Um, it's, um, I'm happy to see all of you here at USC and uh, nice to meet you all. Um, I hope you enjoy the film and I look forward to the Q&A session after the film. Thank you. So I'll ask you uh, start off with just a couple of questions. Director Huang has said that he was inspired. He's made mostly documentaries. Uh, his first real feature film based on a, a short film called The Great Buddha. Now he has The Great Buddha Plus, which uh, I think is, is a reflection on iPhone 6 Plus and additive <laughs> technology. But, but um, he said he was inspired by his grievances against Taiwanese society. Um, so my question is, in watching this film several times, I get the impression that at least for people at the bottom of society. You know, I'm, I'm struck by the juxtaposition, the big elections we just had in Taiwan, the big political and social movements in 2013, 2014, Sunflower Movement. He's well aware of these things, follows them closely. But for these people, it doesn't really matter if the Democratic Progressive Party or the Guomindang, who wins? Mm -hmm. Nothing changes for them. So I would ask him whether that's really the message here. Uh, he's also been quoted as saying, life is meaningless. There's no hope for redemption in life. So I'm, I'm interested in his take on that. Um, some people are just like dust. You won't really notice them, and then they are just there. Then they are just there. 
然后也不见，也不代表他们不重要。The fact that we didn't really see them or didn't really acknowledge them doesn't mean that they don't exist. 那例如说，我们在这边可以享用这个场地，可是场地使用完之后，总是会有人来帮他打扫，然后隔天我们可以继续享用这个美好的场地。那我们永远不晓得，我们不是永远不想，我们不会去注意这些来打扫的人。可是他帮助我们，我们的生活。For example, take this venue. For example, after this film, after the Q and A session, there will be cleaning staff to clean here, and then for it to be used and ready for tomorrow. But for us, we're just here for the film. We won't notice that they help us or they work here. 那从有人类开始就有阶级，那从部落的时候就会有首领。君主时候就会有国王、贵族、平民跟奴隶。那到了现在的民主社会，就是用资本的方式分分成领导人、有钱人、一般百姓以及在底层的人。So um people are divided by um people are structured in different classes, and then there's also hierarchies as well. If there is a king, there will be slave. If there's a leader, they will just be commoner. So in the democracy society that we have now, um, it works on uh, capitalism. So some people are leaders, and rich people, and poor people. So in the film, if we think in terms of that structure of feudal society or the king versus slave, these people, we will wonder why they live, why they survive, and why they are still here. 那我不是奴隶，所以我没有办法用同样的身份去思考。那我只能把这样子的问题。提出来，作为一个说，问我们身为一个人，我们为什么要存在着 ？I'm not in their position, so I cannot speak for them. But、uh, what I do is to identify this issue and then try to think why we exist. Following up on, on that quickly,、um, I've also read though that his attitude、uh, toward life. Is is also that, as I say, it has no meaning. And at one point,、uh, Director Huang was talking about doing a film about white collar workers. How would a film about white collar workers be different from this particular film if the message is life is meaningless and there's no hope? This is actually the next、um, story that I'm working on right now. Is there going to be, without giving too much away,、um, is there any hope for those people? <laughs> Pretty bleak. Uh, I think I've always been. 人之所以为什么要活着这件事情，一直有很大的困惑。那我觉得店里面释迦是我在思考这件问题一个很重要的角色。I've been always thinking about the question why we live, why human live, and then in the film,、um, the character of Sugar Apple is the、uh, character that I、um, think. And then through his、uh, character, I think this question a lot. 然后，很多人会说，释迦这个角色如果拿掉的话，对电影一点影响都没有。可是我觉得释迦在这个电影里面，他扮演的是一面镜子的角色。A lot of people say, actually, if you don't include Sugar Apple in this film, that seems doesn't really have any difference. But、uh, from what I think,、um, Sugar Apple is actually a mirror in this film. 
。那这部电影里面，不管是有钱的有钱的人，像 Kevin 或者是副议长，或者是比较穷的，像世家或者杜彩，他们都努力在赚钱，只是赚多赚少，然后努力在生活。但这电影里面有一个人，就是他不赚钱也不工作，然后每天无所事事。那个人就是世家。So in the film, no matter whether they are rich or poor, rich people like Kevin Huang or those poor people like、um, Belly Buttons, they are actually working hard to earn money. It, the difference is just the rich people earn more, the poor people earn very little. But in the film, it is、uh, Sugar Apple. Uh, he's the only person who doesn't make this effort to earn money, but just idle around the whole day. Then I think that human beings live only to make money, but what else do we need to do? The Sugar Apple, as a person who doesn't work and doesn't make money, but still lives, what does he represent? I think that he is a question for me. So I've been thinking about the Um, situation that if we、uh, live but not making money, or、um, not making those effort to try to make money, and then Sugar Apple, this character is actually uh, who uh, not working, not earning money, and then this is the uh, the uh, start point that I keep thinking about these questions. 然后像杜财最后死掉，然后我们可以看到杜财他这样一个穷人。活着的时候，其实活得不像人，可是，在他死的时候，在地上画出了一个人的形状。那那人的形状，其实就像是达文西里面一个黄金的比例，有一个人头、两只手、两只脚、一个身体，所以他在死的时候，反而像一个人。Um, like um, belly button when he um, when he is living, he Actually, doesn't live like a human being. He just struggles. But when he's dead, he、um, he can. You can actually like draw a white line around his body, so he sort of left a human shape on the ground. So this is like a Da Vinci's perfect human、um, body ratio. So while he's li- while he's alive, he cannot be a, or doesn't live like a human. But when he's dead, he sort of become one. 然后最后就是在出殡的时候，呃，菜谱跟土豆两个人为了杜彩的遗照吵架。那土豆有讲说，其实也没有什么人认得杜彩。那世家捧着的是杜彩的遗照，然后他面对这一些过程，其实是无动于衷的。那我们在思考，我们的到底是以什么样的形象？ So, for example, for the、uh, last scene about funeral, so there is a fight between um, um, peanuts and、uh, pickle, and then they were fighting about the last photo um, in um, in the frame of、um, belly button, and then so they were fighting, and then、uh, peanuts was saying that actually no people. It doesn't matter because no people know him, so it doesn't matter. But at the same time, we can see Sugar Apple sort of sit on the sofa and just being indifferent. So here we、um, can think about what's the meaning of living. Um, I think that is we now have many Facebook or Instagram pages, and there are many of our photos. So what kind of image we are living? What kind of image we are living? 形象活着是在 Facebook 上面，还是真实的自己的活着 ？So now we have a lot of social medias, Facebook, etc., and then we have a lot of our photos. But、uh, the question I want to ask is about in terms of what images or in terms of what form that we are living right now. I have one last question, and we'll turn to the audience. McCoy,、um, this is something that a lot of critics have raised. The use of black and white, and then color for for the dash cam, and a lot of critics have suggested that、uh, the director is trying to juxtapose the life of these really poor underclass people in black and white, and the rich people are shown in color,、uh, or 
I believe, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I, I believe he thinks more that it, it's to show that the poor people's escapism through voyeurism, um, and that's why he's using color there, not because he's trying to separate. He's been very, it seems to me in his interviews, he's been very clear that this film is not trying to send a message about anything, about class differences, it's just a story about people. And so he thinks it's been overinterpreted by the critics, and so I'd be interested in whether he actually feels that way. Well, a lot of people think that I use black and white to uh, depict those underprivileged people and then those color uh, images for the rich people, but actually that's not what I meant. No. 一开电影会选择用黑白的，是因为这个电影这个故事其实是蛮写实的。那我觉得黑白可以制造一种距离感跟魔幻感，让写实的程度可以降低。So uh, for a film to be shot in black and white, or the majority of it is black and white, it's about for the story to be um, more realistic. But for me to do it in black and white is to create a certain distance and then to make it sort of um, have the component of uh, magic realism. So in terms of the dash cam, the video is um, in color. The color is actually uh, from the mind or from the perspective of belly button and pickle. Now,我在设计这一段的时候, 所以杜彩跟蔡普在看老闆的生活,就像是我在看八卦雜誌一樣。So um, when I um, write about that uh, particular moment in the film, it's um, about peeking. So as if we are peeking in, you know, reading the gossip magazine, and then we try to peek into the life of celebrities and uh, rich people. And then uh, for uh, Billy Button and Pico, they are peeking into the life of the boss, so they um, have a lot of imagination, and then does the uh, video become colorful for them? Hey, great, thank you very much. So let's go to the audience, so let's start over here. So uh, just to mention this, I think the black and white heightened the satire and the compositions while distancing, you felt the characters were sort of ants in this cool world. And the question is, I realize it's probably a distancing device too, the choice of having the narration and sometimes the awareness of saying, hey, this film's in black and white, but the character says the other, well, don't tell anyone. So those, those were like distancing. Can you talk something about those ideas? Just, uh, <clears throat> 这电影就是它跟一般电影不太一样的地方，就是它一直在提醒观众你在看电影。从我的旁白出现的时候，就是在提醒观众说你在看电影，你在看别人的生命，这是跟你无关的。So one of the major difference between this film and other films is that the audience is constantly reminded that you are watching a film. You are watching a film. And then you are watching lives. 然后当初我们决定用黑白的时候，也会考虑到观众可能会排斥黑白的电影。可是我的经验是，一旦开始看了，看了二十分钟之后，就会忘记你在看黑白的电影。所以我在中间安排了一个粉红色的摩托车，提
in the very beginning, we are concerned about whether audience can uh, accept a uh, majority is black and white film. But uh, from my experience, is that actually after 20 minutes, uh, audience will sort of get used to it, and then they sort of kind of blend in and forget it's a black and white film. That's why in the film, I particularly um, have a pink bicycle to remind you this is actually a black and white film. <笑>那最后就是产生的那个距离感电影前面一个多小时告诉你 So I want to say a little more about this kind of distance uh, the film created. So uh, the last uh, moments of the film is actually the Great Buddha that we saw on the screen. And then also what you can hear is this constant knocking knocking and knocking for the last 30 seconds of film so um it's in the film and then later it becomes black and then it, you still hear the knocking and knocking so by here i want to bring the audience in the film so you are in the film for the last one hour or so you are watching stories you're watching their lives but in the last 30 seconds you are uh, part of the film and i want you the, I want to bring you into the Buddha, inside the Buddha. So it's not just you watching other people's life, you are watching yourself. Uh, excuse me, when I were in China, I also saw several Taiwan movies which were all in Mandarin. In China, I hardly saw Taiwan movies in, the, in Taiwanese, not Mandarin. So what does the Taiwanese mean to you and to this movie? Do you use it to, sh to show the to show the, the sense of reality of, of those people, to, to make the depiction more real. Uh,我书写的是一个关于我身旁的故事。那在台湾的中南部,台语是一个普遍使用的语言。那我在书写这个故事的时候,我觉得 什么样的人，他原本讲什么样的话，那就是要用什么样的语言。就像是你拍了一部英国的电影，故事发生在英国，可是讲的人却是纽约的英语腔，我觉得那是不对的。So about the uh, Taiwanese Hokkien language used in the film, I'm writing the stories that is actually around me, especially in southern Taiwan. And then uh, in southern Taiwan, this is a language that is common used in everyday life. So I w want to use this language because this is a language these people will use. For example, if this film is about like UK and then those characters speaking the New York accent of English, then I don't think that's right. with the mic, so you may have to speak loudly. Okay. Maybe stand up. Uh, in the West, uh, it is... Oh, here's the mic. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, interesting characters. Um, in the West, it is perceived uh, that Buddha is the manifestation of silence. And in your film, uh, Buddha makes the noise. Uh, did you mean for us to get some message that there is more to Buddha than the silence that we were led to believe?
。其实这部片子叫《大佛》，那我觉得佛其实是一个一个一个形象。那如果你把大佛换成别的神明，他可能就会是道教；换成也有可能换成耶稣，换成玛利亚，都是不同的宗教。所以对于我来讲，大佛其实是一个象征。那它象征的意义是一种关于法典，就是像我们心中的道德、国家的宪法或法律一样。So, um. This film is called Great Buddha Bus, and then、um, it is the Buddha statue here in the film. But what I want to get at is not just Buddhism or Buddha, but actually this kind of like image of deity. So, for example, it could be Jesus Christ or Maria or other different、um, deity for religious. And then what I try to do is to see them as symbols. So these images and symbols, and then what I'm trying to say is like. They are symbols, and then there are those like norms or morality that in our life. 那道德或宪法或法律，应该是我们去深信不疑的。但它有的时候里面装了一些不好的东西，我们难道不能怀疑它吗？ So, for example, for those norm,、uh, moralities, laws, or norms, that are something that we should believe in. But actually, it might be possible that inside those things, there might be something bad there. So maybe we can think about it or have question about it. Ah, Fo 本身其实是安静的，不安静的是侍奉。佛的这些信徒们，也就是神明的追随者，也就是我们人。So Buddha is silent, but what is noise is actually human beings. Is we the follower of the Buddha? 所以宗教的问题通常就是人造成的，而不是它本身。佛本身其实并没有表达任何意见。So all the issue around religion is actually created by human being. The Buddha doesn't really say anything. Uh, I'm interested at, in as to how did you find Ling Zhenxiang to compose your music and what was the process working with him. This is my first film, and the music joined us is almost around kind of close to the end of the editing process. 那那时候跟监制的讨论是说，反正这电影已经没有什么不可以的，那我们能不能找一个？更有开创性的音乐家来一起加入，所以后来就找了林生祥。So after discuss with my producers, everything is or everything is possible for this film, and then so for that maybe we are thinking about to invite a more creative and more groundbreaking musician for this film. 那林生祥也是第一次做电影配乐，那他在台湾算是一个非常知名的。非常知名的非主流歌手吧，然后他的创作性也非常强，那我们就觉得说，如果他的加入，或许可以激发出另外一种火花。It is also a Lin Shengxiang, the musician's first time to do music for the film, and then so uh Lin Shengxiang is known for this non-mainstream or independent artist, and then. He has、uh, incredible power for creation, so that's why we would like to. We wanted to invite him to for the film. Back here first. Um. Okay. I I don't need lady. Thank um, you. Okay. Um. I'm also from Taiwan, so this is my third time watching it, and I really love this film. So it's really nice to see you in person. Um. To me, um, there are a lot of. Uh, political messages in this film, and 
So my question is, do you intend to do so? Um, is there any kind of political message you want to convey through this film? And, or is it just simply a reflection of Taiwanese environment? And uh, for example, language, uh, speaking of language you use is Taiwanese versus Mandarin. Because uh, I remember that when I was little, actually I learned Taiwanese first. But when I got into elementary school, I'm forced to learn to speak Mandarin so that I gradually lose my ability to speak Taiwanese. So to me, this film is really personal, intimate, and very political. Yeah. So first of all, we need to think about what is political in that phrase, political messages. Should I answer that? Well, wait that one. No, no, no. <laughs> you don't have to answer. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I think, I think, I think, I think, 跟人的社会就是一个政治，或者是说有人的地方就有江湖。那我觉得，呃，我先从语言开始讲起，就是我刚刚已经回答过的问题。对我来讲，它是很简单的，就是我书写这些人的故事，那这些人原本就是用台语
were they professional actors beforehand? Um, how did, did you sort of, when you were creating this movie in mind, did you have those specific actors in mind? Um, were they just kind of people just walking about? Um, so yeah, I'm just a little curious about that.就是蔡普跟杜才是这两部片的主角在台湾唯一全世界唯一认识的职业演员然后我觉得他的样子也蛮适合来演的那 So um, actually um, the actors who play belly buttons and pickles they are the protagonists for both films that is the great buddha the shorts that I made and then the great buddha plus the feature length film that you just watched right now and then about um, Belly Button. Um, Belly Button is a professional actor, and then at the moment that I'm making the Great Buddha, I mean the short version, he is the only professional actor I know in Taiwan or in the entire world because I used to work in documentary. This is my first feature film. 然后蔡普的话是我的朋友，他也是一个纪录片的导演。然后他没有他没有演过电影，所以我就觉得我觉得他样子也蛮适合的，就找他来演。So Pickle is actually my friend, and then he himself is a documentary director, and he never do any acting before. But I thought, you know, he sort of fit with his character, so I invite him to join our film. 然后他们两个除了外形适合之外，最重要的是他们两个人。对他们的生活环境so um, belly button and pickles they are um, uh, the actor who play these two characters they are um, in terms of appearance that are good for the uh, characters but they themselves also are very familiar with the uh, living environments the life condition and also the people that i want to talk about in this film for example um, the actor who played belly button he himself actually has some friends like those people in the film, and then Pico, as a, di a documentary director, also have experience um, film those people. 然后像世家，他是一个职业演员，然后他会找他，其实有另外一个原因，就是他的，我觉得他的表情其实会让人家难以猜测。那我就觉得他非常适合这样一个。so in terms of the actor Sugar Apple, he is a professional actor, and then um, what I um, really appreciate about his acting is his expression, because it's actually hard to tell and hard to guess, and then so I think he is very suitable for this character. 然后这部电影基本上就是我先把剧本写完才开始找演员。所以我会针对这剧本里面的角色去找适合的演员，例如说这电影里面有一个副议长，然后他在警察局大吵大闹，他是台湾一个非常有名的剧场的导演，然后他平常讲话就是一直骂脏话，然后讲话很大声，然后
in the film who is the person shouting and very loud and being rude in the police station try to rescue Kevin Wong. And then he's actually a director of theater, theater director. And then his style is noted for just shouting and all those like <laughs> F words and very loud and very rude. So I think, yeah, maybe he's just perfect with this role. Yeah. <laughs> Um, thank you so much. So the thing I have after um, seeing this film is about the, uh, the human loneliness. So I think when um, the Billy Batten died and Pickle went to his house for, for the visit and he sat on his bed and, and he specifically talked about like he cannot understand Billy Button. And for the character like the sugar apple, I think he always um, act alone in the film. I'm just wondering, could you say more about human loneliness? And is this an intentional message you try to delay, uh, try to deliver in this film? Thank you. So this is actually just um, from my thoughts. So my thinking is human beings is lonely. 然后其实你跟你的兄弟、爸妈或者你爱的人 在如何的了解对方，我都觉得都不算了解，因为，例如说，我现在会把我的想法跟你讲，可是可能明天我的想法就会变，那我觉得我都不认识我自己了，怎么可能会认识别人？ So for example, even even if one's very close with family with the people he or she loved, and then try to understand each other, but at the end, everybody is lonely. And then in fact, we cannot understand each other perfectly. So for example, I'm here to sharing with you what I think, my thoughts, but you know, I might change my mind, my thought tomorrow. So even I don't know myself, how do we know the other person? So like so for example, these characters, belly buttons, pickles, and sugar apples, sometimes they hug or they're being close with each other and they try to live together, help each other out, but they still need to face their own personal solitude. And then I think this is life. So I grew up in Tai, like Southern Taiwan as well, so a lot of elements in the film like relates a lot to me. So I also read a couple of your interviews and I realized that like I know that you're not really supportive of some of Taiwan's attempt to be internationalized. For instance, in the film, the art center is called Globe, but everything else in the village is very regressive. The whole village um, as a whole is also very devoid of resources, so it's supposed to be an irony, I suppose. So my question is, what do you think is the roots of, of Taiwanese people or Taiwan in general? Because I know that it's something that you really want to explore. So first of all, I would like to think about what is internationalization. No, no, you can't. <laughs> 
没有。啊<笑>、嗯，我是一个英文非常差的人，但我不是。就因为您说过的那个说在台南就是那个。不对，所以我现在要讲。所以我要讲，这是我的疑惑。我是一个英文非常差的人，我就要讲垃圾车的事情。我英文非常差，所以我不是在找找借口说学英文不好，但我觉得英文是一个语言，我觉得国际化是一种文化的学习。台湾台南有个市长，他就是利用垃圾车，一边收垃圾一边放英文教学。Hi, how are you? My name is Mary。好，这种你觉得这样？学得学得懂英文吗 ？So I am, I personally am not good at English. So for me, English is not just a language, but it could also be a culture too. But in、uh, one of the、uh, cities in southern Taiwan, they try to promote English education so much in that、uh, for the daily、um, trash collection, the trunk, the music is actually. English conversation. Hi, Mary. How are you? Da 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 da. While everybody tried to just throw away the trash to the trunk. 然后台湾有很多美语补习班，然后都是在教大家怎么学英语，怎么学美语。可是那还是一个学习文字跟语言，而不是文化的精髓。我觉得那个不是国际化。There are a lot of cram schools about teach kids about how to learn English. For me, these practices are just to learn the words, the language, but not the culture. So this is not internationalization. 那我觉得台湾的文化性其实是很强的。你如果问我台湾文化是什么，我会跟你说，台湾文化就是杂种文化。I think um. Taiwanese culture is very strong. If you ask me what is Taiwanese culture, I will tell you it is a hybrid form of culture. 那杂种文化不是不好，杂种文化是最强的。通常杂种都是把最好的基因留下来。所以你看到那个野狗可以活很久，纯种狗在马路上很快就死掉。Hybridity, the form of hybridity, is actually not bad. It's actually the strongest for me. For example, in the hybridity, the best and、uh, the best gene left. So, for example, those tree dogs, those hybridized dog, they actually can live on tree. But for those otherwise, and they just would, they would just die. 那台湾其实从以前不管是中国的汉文化，然后到日本，到美国。日本、韩国，甚至世界各国的文化，其实都在台湾。所谓的杂种交流，可是我觉得台湾最大的问题就是从来不认可自己。我觉得找不到自己的时候，你就找不到自自己基因在哪里，你就全部都是别人的时候，你就难以成为杂种，因为杂种一定有一个母母种、母源在那边，你必须要再建立一个母源。In Taiwan, there are different um, um, cultural influences. For example, from China, from Japan, from America, from Korea, and our other countries as well. So、um, you see this kind of different interaction and also exchange from different cultures, different na nations. But what I'm concerned about Taiwan is that. They cannot recognize themselves. They don't acknowledge themselves, and then for this, they cannot find their own genes. So for the hybrid form of culture, there's all different origins, but you need to recognize yourself to make the、uh, the hybrid form a valid form. I think we have time for one long or two shorts. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to the lady over here.、Uh, okay. This is a.、Um, I'm not a feminist,、uh, but I wanted to ask you、uh, a very、uh, important question about uh, women uh, images in your film. You have、uh, prostitutes, women of the night, 
you have uh, a woman that gets beaten, a mother that's sick. Um, where is the image uh, of uh, a woman goddess someone can look up to? Or wasn't, it, this was not meant for this film? But I always look for this in the film to see how I'm portrayed. I'm actually waiting for this question finally. <laughs> 很多人会说我这部电影对女性带有扁平跟歧视的意味，但其实，然后他们觉得，呃，我应该要给女性一个在这电影里面有一个贫富的机会，然后甚至有的人质疑我是不是一个男性的沙文主义者。Many people think that I seem to have a, lot, have a lot of prejudice against women in this film, and then they say that I should portray them in a more positive light, a positive light, and then some of them even think I'm a chauvinist. 那我是不是男性男性上文主义者？我不知道，因为这种事情不是自己说了算。但我想讲的是，在我电影里面，我在写剧本的时候，我很清楚。女性在这个电影里面的扁平跟歧视的角色，可是我并没有因为考量到人家对我的界定，而在剧本里面做一些女性角色的反转。I don't know whether I'm chauvinist because I don't know whether I can define by myself. It seems to be other people who would say it. But uh, in terms of when I'm writing the script, actually I'm aware of the prejudice or different um, unfair situation that these women characters are in. But uh, um, So I'm aware of it. But I didn't change just because I think what other people might criticize me. 那例如说像妈妈她生病的角色只能靠吊点滴然后解决自己身体病痛的问题 um, For example, the sick mother in the film So this is actually a common um, situation in a um, rural area, rural village For those uh, women who w uh, overwork in their uh, younger lives and then when they become old they are, it's all disease because they overwork and then, but as you can see from the film, they don't seem to be taken care of properly or there's no proper social welfare system there. 那其他女性比较物化女性的这些角色对女性的想象也是来自于媒体传递的物化女性的角色所以他们对女性是很刻板的我想讲的是关于刻板这件事情 terms of other objectification of um, women in this film um, I want to talk about for example those privileged men like Kevin's and the chairman and the congressman it's how they see women, how they treat women but for those uh, other people like belly buttons and pickles, they also, they might also see women in that objective uh, objectification light because of the mass media. So what I want to talk about is actually not objectification of women, but in terms of this stereotype. So, <coughs> 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 Kevin跟傅一长，他们是展现男性在权力跟金钱用在女性的身上。那蔡普跟杜才，他们是受到媒体物化女性的影响，对女性带有的想象，所以我的片子里面的这些女性才把她描写的这么刻板。So 
So for example, those um, rich people like Kevin, um, because of their powers and money and the sources that can utilize, so that's how they see women and how they treat them. But for belly buttons and pickles, because they are influenced by so, um, mass media, so that's why they have a lot of imagination of women. Well, since that was a long question, I think we should thank Director Huang and that's it, we turn it in. And that, thank you.